OK, we've got another question now from Mike. Where is Mike? Hi, Mike. Hi. What's so offensive about P.G. Woodhouse? Very interesting. So this only broke today. This is the story about, uh, obviously, the great novelist P.G. Woodhouse, created Jeeves and Worcester and the Blandings novels. Uh, the publisher has decided to remove and rewrite certain aspects of uh, P.G. Woodhouse's work. This is Penguin Random House. They've added some trigger warnings. They've said that some readers may think the themes and characters are outdated. The thing is, people who read P.G. Woodhouse, I've read many novels by P.G. Woodhouse, I understand that they were written a long time ago and they're set in the past. Believe you me, I've already got that. It's OK. <laughs> I don't need some sort of school mom to go through the books with a felt-tip pen and cut out the bits that might upset me. What the hell is going on? What, like the redacted stuff in an inquiry? Yeah. They're taking out bits it's, and pieces exactly. and all that kind of stuff. I just don't think to make... Uh, you can't just expunge everything to the history vaults. It's you know, so it was weird. a moment in time. We've hopefully moved on. If you, you know, if people have been offended by that and and, and not bring it around again. But, but why, as opposed to focusing on that, let's focus on new writers then? Right. Yes. yes. But you know, the truth is that P.G. Woodhouse is one of the best prose stylists in the English language. People could benefit from reading his books. You don't mess with the master. Like it is, the, the, it's just masterful prose. And some jumped up executive, talentless idiot at Pub Penguin Random House thinks they can go through and, and improve on these books. Give me a break. Oh. It's absolutely pathetic. <laughs> These people are just... They're just halfwits. Total halfwits. They're Puritans. They're Puritans masquerading as publishers. They should be in a different job. Yeah, they should just be selling fruit at a market or something. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. <laughs> but the thing Organic. Is, or Organic, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> Where do you stop? Are you going to go back... I mean, they seem to target the racist references because... Uh, racist what, by our standards, absolutely. Racist yes, by our yes. standards, of course. Um, but, OK, well, do we need to change all the misogynistic references that well, are in all the past history books? Do we need to update Shakespeare? Because, no, we don't talk like that anymore, so maybe we should rewrite every single Shakespeare into modern prose. This is a very interesting point, Diane, because I think what this reveals is actually the particular pet peeves of the publishers themselves, you know? There are certain books they're not going after. There are certain offensive phrases they're leaving alone because they don't offend them. It's just the things that bother them. If they took a scalpel to the Bible, that wouldn't go down uh, particularly well. No, because we women don't come off very well. We get a lot of um, grief in the Bible, and we're the only people making bread, as far as I can tell. Right, exactly. I mean, if they were to say, you know, the moment where in, it's in the Old Testament where it says that women who menstruate have to isolate themselves and sit in a tent, that I would say that's quite offensive. How much chocolate is in the tent? Well, that's the question. <laughs> what would you They've say? They've not gone after Mills and Boons. No, exactly. Why not? Well, I have no idea. I've never written for them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never read a Mills and Boone, to be I honest. I did as a child. I remember, actually, my mum finding me reading one and she went mental. Because they're very erotic, apparently. But, see, to let you understand, I was a strange child, I'm a strange adult, that's all fine, and I got one of these high-speed dubbing things, so I used to tape myself reading Mills and Boons and then play it back to myself <laughs> on high-speed dubbing. And I used to get myself so excited I wouldn't go to bed. And then I hated my mum so much, I had IBS as a child, I used to over dose on Weetabix and do diarrhoea to annoy her. <laughs> now, this, this actually explains a lot, Bruce. We're going to move on, though, to another question before we get, delve any deeper into the dark labyrinth that is Bruce Devlin's psyche.